So guys, you know what this video is all about. It's about repairing this piece of equipment. Which I don't really know why you would you need that much power in a car. I know it's fantastic to have a that kind of a sound pressure it gives you feeling and it gives you a certain feeling and it takes a certain feeling from you because you won't be able let's face it your hearing will be impaired after the power levels anyway that's a power acoustic one model BAMF 1800 slash 2 1800 watt peak And on the side it has the, the case by the way is a, some sort of aluminum alloy this entire case except this cover that's the only plastic piece on this side we have a battery ground negative with a battery positive battery and a remote to turn it on plus 12 volts there wakes up the amplifier Three fuses, supposed to be 20 m each, and the connector for speakers. As you can see, you can run two different, two separate speakers or one in a bridge mode. And as a RG45, by the looks of it, for the remote, low pass filter, crossover selection, high pass filter. Bass equalizer, subsonic gain and RCA input. But what's more important is that my friend he actually is not an owner of this. It's actually a friend of my friend is the owner of this thing. And he said that it smoked. Let's take a look inside. It's getting interesting. What do we have here? Well, as usual, you have a couple of toroids with a fat wire on them. Because in order to achieve some high power from a 12 volts, you need to step up the voltage. There is no other way around. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a device. And I can actually see that somebody's been mucking around here. You can see how crooked this is, all right, and how bad the thermal paste is spread all over the place. And I spotted bodge this resistor, and in fact, right there you can see a burnt place. And more of it, I can see a burnt resistor right there. Again, a crooked plate, which actually is not even fixed. Oh, so somebody has been repairing this. It's a temperature sensor, which I won't, I won't be surprised if it's not fixed in place as well. And it's not, as you can see. Surprise, surprise. So, where are the actual amplifiers? Well, that's quite easy to spot because of these guys. These guys are in the emitters or the amplifier transistors on the output. Or more correctly would be to say in the sources. Because full MOSFET. Well, of course, the switching will be done by MOSFETs. There's no doubt in that. But having MOSFETs in an amplifier is kind of interesting to me because all amps I built myself are BGTs. There is no single field effect transistor in them, not even a JFET on the input. <laughs> oh, oh, the saga continues. Take a look at that. I mean, like. Take a close, nice look at that. Let me get a pencil to point. 
right there. See the legs of that transistor. Poor bastard. Man. This is slightly bent as well. These legs. You don't even need to focus on it. <laughs> you see it very easily. Even when the scene is out of focus. Oh boy. Okay. So what I'm really concerned about is this sloppiness. You can see how there is actually an insulating pad on this one. There is no pad on this one. Pad on this one. Pad on this one. No pad on this one and pad on this one. And this one, as you can see, is crooked. Very crooked. There is no pad on this one as well. Or there is actually. Yeah. And there is one here. So these are the amplifiers for MOSFETs per channel. And these are actual switches. And this one has a pad. This one has a pad. This one doesn't by the look of it, and this one does. This one does, but it's offset a large amount. This one does. Zi oh boy. This is just ridiculously bodged up. Man, I may just refuse to try repair this. Man. <laughs> I know it will be kind of, it will be interesting for you to see this thing running. Oh, -oh. and I see a possible smoke source. It's that resistor. That will emit some smoke, that's for sure. But another place which looks kind of crusty from a heat is this this very section on this plate doesn't it look a little bit heated ah so why do i think it failed well i think this scene failed once and that forced the owner to send it for repair to some to some moron I ain't gonna say anything else about that person. And that moron repaired this and, and did this bodginess and all that other stuff, but okay, if it gets you running, oh well. He to hell with it. But this and that, and it's absolute piece of crap. Oh boy. But what's more important is that person, in order to take the board out to change this, he probably, he did anyway, took out this plate, took out this um, plate or whatever you call them, these pieces, took the board, did whatever he wanted to do, put the, put the board back in, spread it some paste, uh, which by the looks of it looks like a toothpaste, and spread it with a shovel or some other gardening equipment and uh, didn't bother tightening the temperature sensor down nor this pair of transistors and it uh, did bother a lot to tighten this so much that it bends the transistor out of whack and uh, this one is loose as well Holy smoke! <sighs> you know what? <laughs> I'm really tempted to just refuse this because this is crooked. And I didn't even see the back side of the board. The board is double sided. Yeah. Or no? Hmm. No, it's single sided. These pa patterns are actually mimicking the copper traces on the other side, so that's kind of nice. 
but there are no connections, not a single joint on the entire board on the top side, so that's just an indication. Not much capacitors in here, it's an input caps as well as this one, and that's an output caps. How do I know? Just take a look at the rating. 50 volts, 2200 microfarads each. That's what the rails are probably. Plus minus 40 volt, 40 volts in each rail, plus 40, 0, minus 40 or something like that. Or maybe 45. It, you need quite a lot of voltage to push that kind of power. Into the speaker. But yeah, enough rambling, babbling. I'm gonna take my time and think about this twice or multi or more times. Am I gonna try to repair this piece of crap or not? Because, yeah, and I didn't mention the problem, which I think caused this to blow up. And I don't know if it's blown up, but it it sure looks like that transist the it, it's smoked. But the problem is that by tightening it like that, he probably shorted some of the leads out. And that created a shot on the rail and this went boom. And why does this thing may, may go boom? Is also because as you saw some of the transistors, not all the transistors, have insulating pads. And that's an entire aluminum piece. So tying them together like that, this, some of these transistors are tightened directly and some of these not a good practice, absolutely. That's gonna cause you trouble. So that's probably by doing this, bodginess he created a short on the output of this DC to DC converter, and that's what fried it. Yep. Let me take my time and think about it. I don't wanna rush with this. I've already had similar case before. And I attempted repair of uh, things that really shouldn't be repaired. And believe it or not, I got <laughs> I got yelled at thanks to that piece of crap. So I ain't gonna bother with this one. Let me just everything is loose. Man, what the hell? Look at that. They all can be. Look at that. Not a single one of them. Man. Hey guys, I decided to give it a try, and I did, and um, I uh, desoldered all the transistors, and I was wrong a little bit, <laughs> because these devices that you can see on this corner are not all switches. These are the switches, that's one, that's actually, they are not in pairs even, they are wired in an interesting way. This is the one push-pull configuration, which drives this transformer. There is another push-pull configuration which drives this transformer. So primary so those two transformers are not coupled in any way. But secondaries are, each transformer has one secondary not center tapped. After that they are connected in series, thus uh, getting a center tapped transformer, essentially a center tapped winding, spread it onto two cores to for larger power it's very nice i like it but the point is i dissolved all the components like that these switches and these switches and i tested them and six out of eight here on the amplifier section were okay so i put four of them here for testing purposes they are 100 volt 55 amp mosfets IRL 2910. You originally there was IRF Z48. If only camera would focus. Let's see. Beautiful. That's the original switches. And here are the other parts. These are 55 volts, 64 amp. These are 100 volt 55 amp, so I temporarily put them into this place. I 
also replace the burnt resistor which you can see right here which was located I actually showed you and this one which was which were located over there where two blank spots are because I mounted them temporarily on the other side here you can see them 22 ohms each of course I'm gonna replace them with proper ones just for test sake because I wanted to know is this too far gone or not and happy thing is it's not the converter actually box but I was curious why this resistor char are charged so much they are blown they are fried open so there must be a huge current flowing through a shorted transistor, through a shorted MOSFET, through this resistor, and somewhere. And that somewhere is this and this transistors. This one and this one. They are PNPs. MP transistors, uh, 50 volt collector base rating, and 150 milliamps collector current DC. So I replaced them with similar stuff. Oh, original ones were this type 81266 I replaced them with A733 which I pulled from a junk board from a CRT monitor it's actually a very similar transistor 60 volt collector base rating and 150 milliamps collector current the only difference is the original one was able to dissipate 625 milliwatts according to datasheet and this one is capable only of a quarter watt but they don't get hot really but I'm gonna steal. Since I'm gonna order parts for this anyway, I'm just gonna take those uh, two transistors into account as well. So enough rambling. Let's connect it up. I connected with first it first to my power supply, but this tops out at about two amps. Not really enough for it. The thing, without any load, it, this supply is perfectly cap perfectly capable of powering it. It draws one amp without load. Actually, this video is gonna get long, but I can show you. It's, this bus bar is actually the negative as a battery, so I can use it conveniently and connect the positive here after the fuse, but this supply is currently limited, so no trouble. Okay, 13.4 Okay, you can see no current draw, the load is on. That's because you have to connect 12, put 12 volts on accessory input, which is this remote. If I'm gonna short it out, it's actually gonna hic go into hiccup mode because I have a light bulb there. You can watch the green LED inside going blink, 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 and the current jumping all over the place. Let me try to do it one handed. See, the LED goes blink, 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 and current goes up, 2.3 amps, and that's the maximum, 2.5 or something. And the light bulb doesn't light up. Well, it does, teeny bit, but I understood that that works just fine. And the trouble I'm having is this power supply is not really capable of delivering that kind of juice, so... What I'm doing... Is connecting a 12 volt battery and doing the same procedure and you will see for yourselves that the light bulb will light up let me do it with left hand because it's a bit pain it lights up there is no way that 230 volt light bulb will light up like that on a 12 volt battery it's definitely running just fine It 
it does have some sort of a soft start to it. Switches, barely warm, getting lukewarm. Rectifiers, are not even buzzered at all. By the way, these two are rectifiers, and thankfully they are okay, because one of them is common anode. This one common anode, common cathode, connected in a bridge. And these two are tip 42, tip 42C and tip 41C which I guess are regulators for um, some op-amp rails because there are lots of op-amps as you can see here and good old any 5532 of course no amplifier is complete without it okay so that tells me that the chip is okay which is uh, 494 TL494 but from another manufacturer so that's okay, these are okay, rectifiers are okay, and stuff like that. By the way, just for the giggles, I'm gonna take a look at the voltage here, produced by this. Um, regulators to see is it going, working good or not. By the way, I measured the voltage on the rails and they are exact. 34.7 each, not even 100 millivolts out. And yeah, I connected just a single light bulb, but as you can see, I connected to negative rail and to positive rail across the two capacitors, not from ground to one of the rails. I loaded two rails simultaneously this way. That's a proper way to do it. If you're creating a symmetric load, it won't, your voltage readings will be off, and that's absolutely normal. You're supposed to load it uniformly. Alright, so now I'm gonna order some parts, wait for them to arrive and unfortunately I can't really find an IRL2910 for a good price, so I'm probably gonna change it for IRF3710 which is capable but it's not a logic level MOSFET. I'm gonna do some research to see is it gonna be a problem or not because when this when the opums are supplied with like plus minus 15 volts I doubt it will make difference to be honest because the gate will see like let's see 12 volts that's plenty even a good old hunking MOSFET will switch just fine on that voltage there's no need for logic level MOSFETs but we'll see time will tell Alright guys, done. This now works. I ordered exact replacements. IRL 2110, 2910, excuse me. They're installed. You can see with the thermal compound and everything necessary. Eight pieces. These are just fine. I removed those bulged resistor and put it in more meter or in cuter way. Switch is also replaced, IRFZ48s. NTC is fixed with the thermal compound. And I replaced these trim pads, which this trim pad was installed in the amp. Focus, you moron. Whatever. They were, they were installed the heck? here and here, where you can see this 47 ohm resistors. This bastard and that bastard. I replaced them with fixed resistors because one of them went bad and caused me a lot of trouble and hassle finding the problem. Why the second channel sounds so weird? And I tried to adjust QS and current and it didn't help, didn't change anything. Then after searching for dry caps and for something shorted, I just found that that potentiometer is flaky. So I just went and replaced it with 47 ohm resistors for both channels. They are just fine. 
uh, quiescent current is not excessive, they do not heat up very much at all without heatings and uh, yeah and the audible distortion you can hear audible distortion so let me hook a speaker and i'm gonna just buzz the input because i'm recording with my phone and what do you know i can't play music from my phone while i'm recording from it with it eh, whatever you know i suck at pronouncing okay connected load on you see Green LED is glowing and Wow, that's surprising. So deaf. <laughs> I just wait a second, what the hell is going on? Eh, anyway. way too much i would tell let's touch one finger with to ground so the noise will be less and my power supply goes into current limit while i do that and the second channel as well works just fine so that's that and yeah I don't remember, did I mention it or not? I also replaced those fries, fried resistors, as you can see. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Two of them are fried, was. Two of them were fried, but eh, I decided to replace all of them because they might went flaky after that incident. So that's that. Walking. <sighs> Let me tell you, this little trim part caused me a lot of hassle, so one little hint for you. Before diving deep into the schematic, check simple things first. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. See you.